Chapter 746, Personality Test The harsh winter had passed, but the air in the night was still full of chill. Under the dim illumination of the streetlights, a few sparrows were fluttering and flying, braving the chill to seek food to alleviate their hunger. Right as his cigarette burned out, a black Mercedes-Benz drove fast and quickly stopped in front of Tang Xiao's car. A sturdy man came out and opened the rear door as Chen Zixue came out and tightened his black windproof overcoat while carrying a roll of papers and going toward Tang Xiao's car. Hello, Mr. Tang. Chen Zixue realized that Tang Xiao did not have the intention to get off the car, thus he had no choice but to bow and say. Tang Xiao wore an expressionless expression. He threw the cigarette butt from the window and saw Chen Zixue's face slightly change, then said indifferently, if you have something to say, then say it quickly. The weather is cold, and sleeping on the bed is much more comfortable than outside. For a moment, Chen Zixue was silent. He suddenly let out a smile and said, I'm very sorry for disturbing you this late at night, Mr. Tang. The chief purpose why I did that is concerning the construction project of your company that is about to be held. There's also a saying that Mr. Tang may have heard as well, that delicate works require time and slow labor. And due to your company only giving a short period of time, I personally took charge of the architect team to draw the blueprint design. We could only finish 60% of it. Please have a look at it. Tang Xiao casually glanced at him, then took the rolled design. His vision immediately focused as he opened it and observed it a few times. The design was exquisitely done and showed excellent skills followed the main design given by Tang Xiao. It had been carefully well divided and segmented either the floor height, the distribution of buildings, the use of architectural design and space, all of them were well designed and simply excellent. Despite having only a shallow knowledge of modern architectural design, Tang Xiao still felt astounded. Unfortunately, it was an unfinished, or rather, a semi-finished product. Tang Xiao observed the other dozens of design drawings and then rolled them up again, handed it over to Chen Zixue, and said, It's too cold here. Let's find someplace else to chat. A glint suffused in Chen Zixue's eyes as he returned to his car without hesitation. The two cars drove for less than 10 minutes as they finally stopped at the entrance of a 24 hours convenience store on a nearby street. Welcome. The young and beautiful female clerk raised her head and greeted them. This 24-hour convenience store had two male and one female clerks, and all three of them were very young. However, when the female clerk in the counter saw Tang Xiao, she lightly blanked for a moment before she said with amazement, Tang Xiao? Tang Xiao, who just entered the store, did not pay attention to the female clerk. When he heard her calling his name, he glanced at her from the distance. What he did not expect was that the female clerk turned out to be Yi Lianyan. Why are you here? Seeing Tang Xiao was a pleasant surprise to Yi Lianyan. Looking a bit embarrassed, she said, I'm short on money, so I'm working to earn my living expenses. What about you? How come you are out late at night like this? I just came out to discuss some things with a friend of mine. Never thought I would meet you here, said Tang Su. If anything, just tell me if you are short on money. As long as it is less than seven digits I promise you can work for me later. Yi Lianyan couldn't help laughing. Do you want to pay my salary in advance, by chance? Yup. Confirmed Tang Xiao. Nah. If a gentleman cannot eat from charity, so am I as a woman. Yi Lianyan slightly shook her head. Pay me my salary when I officially work for you. The nearby male clerks curled their lips and shot contemptuous looks. Seven digits. What a bull. Pretending to be some rich redneck. If you want to support and take Yi Lianyan as your mistress, just say it directly. Why the empty words to deceive her? Hypocrite. The duo directly labeled Tang Xiao inwardly. Tang Xiao turned his head to look at Shen Zixue who wore a smiling face without speaking behind his back. He pointed to a table placed by the window and said, Yi Lianyan, 
Give us an Odin serving each and two bottles of water. Got it. Please wait a bit. Yi Lianyan smiled and left. Tang Xiao and Chen Zixue came to the window and sat at the table. Then, Tang Xiao straightly spoke, I have seen the design drawn by your company and they are indeed excellent. But there's something I don't get. Why did you still dare to come to Shanghai while you have yet to complete it? More so that you even dare to find me so late at night like this? It's for benefit and interest. Hence, coming here to find you is a must, said Chen Zixue with a smile. Benefits, huh? Tang Xiao commented with a disdaining expression. Everyone wants to get benefits. But do you think you can slice a piece of the cake by looking for me now? It's a simple truth that what I'm doing is a fool's dream to take the unfinished design, and yet I still want to win this magnificent Tang Corporation's big project tender. I'm very clear about that because I know that no company would hand over the project without a complete design. But I'm betting and turns out that I've already gotten 40% of the bet. Why is that? Asked Tang Xiao with interest. I called you and succeeded in making you leave your comfortable bed in the middle of the night. That proves that I have succeeded in about 20%. Then, you looked at the unfinished design, adding another 20%. Added to the previous, it's 40%, said Chen Zixue with a smile. Tang Xiao nodded and said, You're very confident, something I can appreciate. So, tell me straight. You came directly and took your semi finished design to look for me, were you prepared to impress me? Chen Zixue himself had recited his own script for countless of times, so he could reply with confidence. The magnificent Tang Corporation is planning to build a big construction project of an industrial park and HQ, while my Sinyuan group will only earn a slice, 100 million yuan from start to finish. Once we win this project and start it, your magnificent Tang Corporation can send someone to supervise all the processes of the entire project, including all the capital expenditure required for the project. 100 million? Tang Xiao furrowed his brows deeply. He did not expect that Chen Zixue only wanted 100 million yuan, way too little. Based on the calculation he made with Kong Xia, the construction investment of the magnificent Tang Corporation's HQ and industrial park in Shanghai must be at least 10 billion. Earning 100 million from a 10 billion yuan worth project was definitely not something any construction company was willing to do. This matter shouldn't be as simple as that. No? Tang Xiao subconsciously took out a cigarette as Chen Zixue swiftly took a lighter and lit it up for him. Boss Tang, for you to have such achievements at such a young age proves that your intelligence and wisdom are extraordinary, said Chen Zixue. I want to use your plan to build the magnificent Tang Corporation's HQ and buildings in Shanghai as an introduction, or you can call it a gift. As long as Boss Tang gives your promise to give all future construction projects of the magnificent Tang Corporation to my Sinyuan group. Tang Xiao's face slightly changed and a cold glint suffused his eyes. He took out his phone in front of Chen Zixue and quickly dialed a cell number, saying, Inspect all the senior executives of the magnificent Tang Corporation. I want to know who has leaked out the new plan of the company's branch development. Understood. The voice of the chief of intelligence of the Everlasting Feast Hall transmitted out of the phone. Chen Zixue kept smiling with a calm expression and waited until Tang Xiao finished the phone call. Then, he touched his nose and smilingly said, Boss Tang, your company has made this development plan and I believe that the scale of the project and investment in Shanghai will be quite big. Furthermore, it will be inevitable for you to seek cooperation partners. Frankly. My Sinyuan group has been engaged in real estate business for more than 20 years and can be ranked amongst the top 10 construction companies in China. However, my company has reached a bottleneck at present. If I want to break through this state and propel our development a level, we must find another shortcut and do unconventional gambits. And your magnificent Tang Corporation can give us a way out. Then, I want to ask you something, Tang Shou said indifferently. Do you know how many branches and exclusive stores my company is going to build? I do know about that, 
Chen Zixue shook his head. But I dare say that it will definitely be a lot. Tang Xiao knocked on the table as he squinted his eyes and said, Let's say I hand over the construction project of the magnificent Tang Corporation's HQ and Industrial Park to you. Are you not afraid that I take back my commitment after you're done with the construction? What I'm betting on here is your character and moral integrity, to be honest, said Chen Zixue solemnly. Sometimes one's character is not worth mentioning at all once one is facing the interests and benefits in front, said Tang Xiao casually. I'm betting that your character is worth the stake, once again, Chen Zixue said. In addition, I give you my personal guarantee that my Sinyuan group will not be greedy in the follow-up cooperation. We will take what we must earn and will constrict ourselves to not take a dime from anything that is not ours. What I can guarantee compared to the other construction companies is that we can definitely reduce the budget for building any branch office and the exclusive store of the magnificent Tang Corporation, but still ensure the quality of the project. So, what you meant by benefits is just that you want to go over the path of quantity, no? Said Tang Xiao indifferently. That's right. Chen Zixue firmly nodded. Tang Xiao just nodded in response. Not only did he not give any promise to him, but also shifted his vision at Ilian Yen instead, who now placed two Odin servings on the table, and said with a smile, This stuff tastes great, I once had it here before. How about trying it first? Chen Zixue nodded in response. Although he ate it, he could not taste it at all as he swallowed it. He was calculating inside whether his chance of impressing and moving Tang Xiao had increased, and how much the percentage would be. Tang Xiao quietly ate his serving and occasionally glanced at Chen Zixue's face, scrutinizing his pensive look. It secretly made him surprised and also a bit regretful. What made him surprised was that this man really had the ability and the capital that satisfied and moved him. What made him regret was that Chen Zixue had too much ambition. Although he was not afraid of people with ambition, he did not want to waste too much on him. Can I ask you something? After finishing half the bowl of Odin, Tang Xiao wiped his mouth with a tissue and smilingly said. Chapter 747, It's All About Survival Chen Zixue swallowed the Odin, took the water bottle on the table and sipped it before he replied, Please do ask. I'll answer the best I can. What would you choose if you had to pick between a wolf and an eagle? Asked Tang Xiao. I'd choose an eagle, said Chen Zixue without hesitation. Why? A wolf is wild in nature, always going all out with its strength, tough and tenacious, just like you started eight years ago. Although an eagle indeed can fly high in the sky, it doesn't have a wolf's personality and can only survive in the food chain by virtue of its inborn endowment. The eagle can soar to the vast sky and look down at all walks of life and sentient beings. I would rather sit up high and aloof. I don't want to be a wolf even if, an alpha of its pack, said Chen Zixue. Tang Shou sighed inside. If it was a wolf he would still have the intention to tame it, but it would not be so easy if it was an eagle. One had to be on guard so as not to get pecked and blinded when catching and taming an eagle, and though Tang Xiao had the ability to protect himself, he did not want to waste too much time for that. More so that Chen Zixue had too much wealth. If he were to become a cultivator, he would have the capital to stay in the competition, vying for resources. After Tang Xiao returned to Earth, he found that there were indeed many precious herbs here, but those precious herbs were limited and he did not want to add more troubles. It's really a pity. Tang Xiao took out his wallet and took a hundred bill yuan and placed it on the table. He then got up and said, I'll see you at the project tender. Having said that, he greeted Ilian Yen and directly left the 24-hour convenience store. He could approve Chen Zixue's means in the striking business deal and also recognized his ability, but he could not acknowledge him as an individual. Chen Zixue did not get up. All sorts of thoughts churned up and swirled inside his mind, recalling Tang Xiao's words before he left. Although he also realized that Tang Xiao allowed him to participate in the project bidding and was highly likely to choose his Sinyuan group, what did he mean with his last sentence? 
he could not figure it out and it somewhat depressed his mood. Would you like to have another serving of Odin, sir? Yi Lianyan came to Chen Zishue's front with a smiling face and asked after cleaning up the disposable meal box left by Tang Xiao. Chen Zishue raised his head to look at her pretty face. Suddenly, his heart moved and he asked, Are you called Yi Lianyan? I'm Chen Zishue, the Senyuan. Forget it. Just call me Big Brother Chen if you don't mind. All right, how do you do, Brother Chen? Yi Lianyan smiled. Chen Zishue nodded and said with a smile, Would you like to sit and have a chat? Yi Lianyan complied and sat on the chair previously used by Tang Xiao. She then smiled and said, Brother Chen should be a quite capable man, right? I just overheard your conversation. You want to have a business partnership with Tang Xiao, right? Chen Zishua found it funny, so he asked, Does it mean I'm very capable because I want to form a partnership with Tang Xiao? That's of course, Yi Lianyan smilingly said. Tang Xiao is a very capable person. If you don't have any skills, how could he possibly miss his sleep and come here to discuss business with you otherwise? However, I can tell that it's you who are asking him after hearing the exchange between you two. Chen Zixue couldn't help laughing and said, That's right. It's me who's asking him to give me a source of income and a fortune. You can make your dream come true as long as you are sincere. That's what I believe, Yi Lianyan laughed. As for Tang Xiao, he sometimes has his soft side in some cases, though. Do you perhaps know him very well? Asked Chen Zixue, surprised. Yi Lianyan pondered before shaking her head and saying, Nah, I don't know him that well. But I can sense that side of him shine sometimes. Brother Chen, you're a very handsome man, but you don't have Tang Xiao's charm. I recall from before. Yi Lianyan's words abruptly halted as though she realized that it was something that could not be said. Finally, she said with a somewhat awkward expression, I recalled when Tang Xiao saved me. A smile outlined on the corner of Chen Zixue's mouth and his depressed mood turned for the better. He had a calm personality, to begin with, and rarely engaged in idle talk with strangers. But an impulse made him want to chat with Yi Lianyan at this time, so he was not in a hurry to leave. He then smilingly said, could you tell me what abilities he has that he can be a savior for such a pretty woman like you? I'm sorry. I can't tell you that. Yi Lianyan declined with a dry smile. Oh. Chen Zixue looked at her straight on. Being stared at by him made Yi Lianyan a bit stunned. She secretly regretted talking too much just now. She hurriedly got up and said, Brother Chan, I don't think you're a bad person, so I'm going to tell you something. Do not ever have sinister thoughts toward Tang Xiao, or you will end up very miserable otherwise. With that said, she immediately returned to the checkout counter and never looked at Chen Zixue's direction. Chen Zixue slightly furrowed his brows and took back his vision. His eyes reflected that he fell deep in thought. The secret that Elian Yen did not want to say was probably because the matter was not simple. Though his curiosity was indeed piqued, he still suppressed the urge. Early in the next morning, when Tang Xiao woke up from his sleep, he found that the one who was beside him before had disappeared. After getting dressed, cleaned his face and rinsed his mouth, he went to the first floor and then heard some sounds from the kitchen. Got up early? Tang Xiao leaned on the door and watched Kong Xia's back, who was now wearing an apron and cooking. Kong Xia turned around and smilingly said, Wasn't it you who got up late at night? Why not sleep more? There's something very important we gotta do today. It's best to get up early and join in the fun, no? Tang Xiao laughed. Anyways, the host of the project tender will still be you, though. I will just listen and watch. Kong Xia let out a smile and said, You really are one hell of a big boss, always idle and carefree. Anyways, just go to the dining room and wait there for a while. Breakfast will soon be served. Tang Xiao did not leave, however, but said, Anyways, it was Chen Zixue who called me last night, hence I met him. 
Kong Xiao was stunned and she immediately turned around to ask, what did he want from you? His company, the Senyuan Group, has yet to finish the entire blueprint, but he wanted to make a deal with me, said Tang Xiao. This guy is very good, and I admit that he's by far the most business genius I've ever seen. I gotta tell you another issue as well. The latest development plan of our magnificent Tang Corporation has been leaked out. What? Kong Xia's face greatly changed and there was faint anger in her eyes. I already sent someone to investigate it, said Tang Xiao. All of the senior executives of the magnificent Tang Corporation will be investigated, and I'm sure the results will come out soon. What I want to tell you is this. The Sinyuan Group has completed a large part of the overall blueprint design, and I've seen more than half of it. It's excellent. If there is no special design and low bidder at today's tender, pick this Sinyuan Group. But this is not something trivial. Kong Xia frowned. I know. I get what you mean, Tang Xiao nodded. But Chen Zixue told me his original idea, and it was the kind of ulterior motives behind the bidding. Although the amount of work in Shanghai will be quite big, it's obvious that he wants to produce the complete high-quality blueprint design, and yet he has not much time for that. He wanted to give up, so he offered another option. After a few minutes, Tang Xiao narrated Chen Zixue's plan and finally concluded, he wants to bet on me, then we'll let him do the gamble. We'll hand over the construction of our company's HQ and industrial park to his Sinyuan group. Once it's completed, involve him in managing the construction of our branch offices and exclusive stores. As long as he's not greedy, we don't have to pay much attention to him again later. Kong Xia thought deeply for a while before she forced a smile and said, You are oversimplifying this matter. This Chen Zixue obviously understands that we must establish branch offices and exclusive stores in the second half of the year, hence he made this request. But you must not overlook something. It's impossible to finish the construction of the magnificent Tang Corporation's HQ and industrial park within half a year. Not even a year is enough. According to our estimation, it can be fully completed at least by the end of next year. I'm aware of that. But then again, we're also saving the matter of constructing our branch offices and exclusive stores in different provinces one after another, aren't we? It's not like we can build them all at once. We can give the Senyuan group the projects in one or two provinces. After the work in the first province is completed, and if this company dares to rob us in broad daylight and become greedy, we can stop the cooperation in time. Kong Xia thought about it and said, that's quite sound and reasonable indeed. So be it, then. If there are no good surprises from the other bidders today, we'll pick the Senyuan group, then. The breakfast was quite lavish and tasted great. After Tang Xiao and Kong Xia had finished their breakfast and were preparing to go out and head to the Paradise Manor, an uninvited guest arrived and ruined all Tang Xiao's plans for today. Why did you come here, Grandpa? Tang Xiao looked at the worried-looking Tang Guisheng and asked with a surprised expression, while Kong Xia looked somewhat uneasy standing before him. The person who accompanied Tang Guisheng was Tang Min. There was an uneasy look on her face when she looked at Tang Xiao, seemingly wanting to speak a few times but hesitated. Despite seeing Kong Xia and Tang Xiao living together, there were no thoughts regarding this issue inside her head at the moment. Let's have a talk inside your study room, Xiao. All right. Tang Xiao took Tang Guisheng and Tang Min to the study room, while Kong Xia prepared to serve tea. When the tea was delivered and served to Tang Guisheng and Tang Min, she then prepared to leave. Sit there, said Tang Xiao as he pointed to the chair next to the desk. Kang Xia looked dull and walked over obediently, albeit hesitantly. Tang Guisheng, however, was a bit surprised. He looked at Kang Xia and shifted his vision to Tang Xiao before he slowly said, a major incident happened. It's about the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, along with a large number of intelligence personnel and servicemen. It's also about the survival and destruction of the hidden force of our Tang family. Tang Xiao's heart thumped and he could not believe what he heard. 
one must know that now was the age of peace. How could such a grave issue occur? Exactly what happened, Grandpa? Tang Guisheng looked hesitant. He spent a lifetime in the military judging and reading countless people. Although he could see that Kong Xia and Tang Xiao had an unusual relationship, he did not know whether he could trust her, because what he was going to say was of the utmost importance. The situation as a whole was important and what was even more important was the matter regarding Tang Xiao. With his excellent wisdom, Tang Xiao found Tang Guisheng glanced once again at Kong Xia and immediately understood what he had in mind. Then, he said, Grandpa, Kong Xia is my woman. She's also a cultivator and someone very close who I can trust. You can feel at ease to say anything here. Chapter 748 Let bygones be bygones, but be forever loyal to the country. It was the first time for Tang Guisheng and Tang Min to hear Tang Xiao personally admit the fact that he had a woman already. Even the outside knew that his woman was Mu Weining, he never admitted it personally. At this moment, the father and daughter exchanged looks and finally accepted Kong Xia thoroughly. Also, she was a cultivator. Her status as a cultivator showed that she was indeed Tang Xiao's most effective assistant. At this moment, both of them realized that it was no wonder Tang Xiao could transfer his authority over the magnificent Tang Corporation's management to Kong Xia. Little Kong, you will be the future daughter-in-law of my Tang family. Tang Guisheng turned his head to look at Kong Xia. After saying those words, he directly turned his sight to Tang Xiao and took the cigarette Tang Xiao put down on the tea table. The daughter-in-law of the Tang family? A huge wave surged up inside Kong Xia's heart at this moment, and her tender body could not help but tremble a few times. Intense ecstasy along with joy made her feel more satisfied than ever. She cared a lot about Tang Xiao, and naturally, cared about getting approval from the Tang family's elders. She imagined about it sometimes but did not expect her dream to come true. External variables were sometimes needed to deepen one's affection, and those who wanted to love and be loved would truly care. What Tang Xiao just said really made her satisfied, deepening her feelings for him. Tang Guisheng lit up the cigarette and took two deep puffs. Then, he slowly said, the issue is very troublesome this time. It can be said to be big trouble. It will not only cause losses in the entirety of China but also inflict heavy losses to the Tang family if it's not handled well. Please don't keep me guessing, Grandpa. Just go straight to the point, said Tang Xiao. Do you know about Mist Source Island? Asked Tang Guisheng. Never heard of it, Tang Xiao shook his head. Do we have such an island in China? Prior to this, I thought it was a good thing that the country tried to conceal the existence of this island. But I didn't expect this situation to occur. As a matter of fact, Mist Source Island suddenly appeared about 20 to 30 years ago outside the sea territory of Taiwan, about 800 nautical miles from it. The moment this island appeared, the country immediately dispatched a large number of troops, geologists, and biologists there. Do you know what situation we found on this island of the same size of Taiwan? It's completely composed of high mountains, which are filled with virgin primeval forests. There were many savage beasts there at first, along with a lot of precious mineral treasures. Even medicinal herbs also grew there. After some highly respected old Chinese practitioners ventured there, they confirmed that some of the herbs were thousands of years of age. I myself personally went there. And on the summit of the mountain in the center of the island has a palace. It's very ancient, but none was able to climb up to the mountaintop and venture into it until now. After the country set up development of the island in secret, the Mist Source Island has been completely under our country's control and a lot of elite soldiers are stationed there, along with the families of some soldiers and researchers for some time in the past. And now, the entire Mist Source Island is inhabited by hundreds of thousands of people. Having said that, Tang Guisheng stopped and took another cigarette. Tang Xiao was shocked, how is it possible for Mist Source Island to still be kept tightly confidential in this era? 
Without mentioning other reasons, the power of the media alone is enough to expose the situation there, right? It's because of the exposure of the existence of Mist Source Island that many countries are staring, side tanguishing. Many countries attempted to take possession of the island several years ago. But our country has already troops stationed there, while it's also still in our sea territory, hence the failure of their attempts. Taiwan also wanted to set foot there, but they were suppressed and eventually could only choose to be silent. If so, then what exactly is this crisis? Asked Tang Xiao. While suppressing his anger, Tang Guisheng replied, Those foreign countries have always coveted Mist Source Island and even tried every means available to send people there, but there no major issues occurred since the coastline is always guarded very strictly. In recent years, however, some of those countries have been supporting forces to carry out an intense infiltration into the island. What's more, several people of these foreign forces are now really infiltrating through the flaws in the barricade, and the number is not small. Just six days ago, a resident of Mist Source Island suddenly fell into a coma. After getting examined by medical personnel there, they found that it was caused by a virus and the infected had contacted many people everywhere before. Hence, the contagion of the virus unceasingly spread out at an extremely terrifying speed. In just day 4, 80% of the inhabitants of Mist Source Island were infected. Even the garrison there got infected today. All of them amount up to hundreds of thousands of people. Though the country sent the best virus experts there in the last few days, they were still helpless with the situation. Finally, yesterday the senior divine doctor Gui Jianzhou from Beijing also went there. From where did this virus come from? asked Tang Xiao with a frown. From one of the most dangerous organizations in the world, the Stygian Club, said Tang Guisheng in a deep voice. Some people from the Stygian Club infiltrated the island and injected the virus into the first carrier. Some foreign black markets overseas are selling the antivirus, called a strengthening liquid or something. Those who have been injected with this strengthening liquid in advance won't be infected by the virus again. Therefore, thousands of people from the Stygian Club and some other forces have landed on Mist Source Island in the last seven days. The station troops have had several fierce clashes with those people and we suffered quite a few losses as a result. There are some individuals among those people who are very powerful. Tang Xiao slammed his fist on the table and angrily said, that damn Stygian Club again. Its existence is nothing but a scourge. You know about the Stygian Club? Asked Tang Guisheng with fixed attention. A cold glint flashed in Tang Xiao's eyes as he said, I dealt with people from the Stygian Club in some incidents, and they suffered a loss against me every time. Grandpa, you want me to go to Mist Source Island? I did have such a plan. But the current situation over there is very dangerous, Tang Guisheng nodded. There's a virus threat on the one hand, while various forces from abroad are also staring their greedy eyes as well. I'm also worried of. You can cast away those worries, Grandpa, Tang Xiao interrupted his words and said with solemnity. This virus is nothing but a trivial thing, it won't harm me whatsoever. As for those foreign forces, they will never be able to pose any threats to me unless they use a nuke. Tang Guisheng nodded in response without speaking. Then, he bitterly said, there are some people of our family on Mist Source Island, a battalion of martial artists in the military training camp I ordered your second grandpa to secretly set up on the island. Contact the people under the country's first leader when you get there, and then quietly go to the Tang Manor Martial School to find Tang Han. Who is this Tang Han? Asked Tang Xiao. She's your first uncle's daughter, answered Tang Guisheng. Tang Xiao was taken aback and asked, First uncle has a daughter? How come I don't know about her? Tang Guisheng forced a smile and said, In order to have a station on Mist Source Island, we announced to the public that your first uncle's daughter died at the age of four, but she was in fact sent to Mist Source Island in secret. After having gone through various training since her childhood, she then successfully took over the Tang Manor Martial School by the time she turned 18. It's been 11 years since. 
that child, she returned to Beijing every two years in secret. She is 29 years old now, but she has only returned 12 times. Our family owes her way too much. The revelation aroused deep respect in Tang Xiao's heart toward this cousin he had never met. He nodded and said, I understand, Grandpa. Tang Min took two things from the bag she carried, a small green book with the words peace and safe. The other one was a black badge with only a blood drop engraving on it. Xiao, this green book is the proof of identity of the state security department that was done for you, while this badge is the sign of our Tang family's secret force. Take this to your sister and she will naturally believe you, said Tang Min in a low voice. Tang Xiao nodded in response. After hesitating for a moment, he asked, Grandpa, there's someone else who wants me to go to Mist Source Island other than you, right? Who is he? Tang Guisheng and Tang Min exchanged looks, as the former immediately let out a bitter smile and said, Really? I can't hide anything from you. He's the one at the top. Which one? The highest one. Tang Xiao squinted his eyes and asked, Is there any benefits? Just a sentence, let bygones be bygones, forever loyal to the country, said Tang Guisheng. Tang Xiao was taken aback. He subconsciously took a cigarette and lit it. After taking a few deep puffs, he grinned and said, This senior chose to compromise and gave me the plenary country power to act. If my guess is correct, this small green book won't be taken back either, right? Indeed. Tang Guisheng knew that his grandson was smart and immediately nodded and smiled. All right, Tang Xiao stood up. That being the case, then I'll take the job. When do I leave? ASAP, said Tang Guisheng. The garrison base in Shanghai has prepared a military chopper. You can take off at any time. Tang Xiao then looked at Kong Xia and said, I won't be able to accompany you in today's matter. Also, never disclose my whereabouts to anyone. There was deep worry and concern on Kong Xia's face when she got up. Yet, she still nodded and exhorted, please do pay attention to your safety. I know, replied Tang Xiao. Tang Guisheng and Tang Min did not rush to leave. They looked at Tang Xiao's back as he quickly left the house, sighing at the same time. Shanghai Garrison Base Hu Xinfeng, who was clad in his army uniform, had been waiting for a long time. He was the chief of staff of the Mist Source Island Garrison with a senior colonel rank. Prior to this, he was just on leave and returned to Beijing on vacation, but the major incident that happened on Mist Source Island made him receive an order to escort Tang Guisheng to Shanghai and to stand by at the Shanghai Garrison Base. To stand by and wait for someone. He did not know who he was waiting for, and neither could he figure out what kind of identity this person had, to even make him, who was a chief of staff with a senior colonel rank, to wait. Honk. Honk. For black SUVs came from a distance and parked near the apron of military helicopters, as a big man in a black suit opened the car's door. Hu Xinfeng's eyes then fell on the rear door of the third car. He knew that someone who could enter straight from the outside was definitely a top brass. Chapter 749, Ludicrous Bragging Going to Mist Source Island this time, Tang Xiao did not bring a lot of men. In addition to Mo Ao who usually followed him, there were only ten other guards. Despite knowing that there were many unknown enemies he was confident that he could completely destroy them. Nonetheless, he still made a few phone calls on the way to the garrison base. Aside from the class in charge teacher, Han Xingwu, asking for leave, he also spoke to Shui Yu and Li Lao's Han, who had been busy recently, saying that he would find the time to drink with him later. He wanted to invite Li Lao's Han for a meal, but he was in a hurry to leave Shanghai, hence called the man ahead of time. When Tang Xiao got off the car, he saw the tall and straight posture of Hu Xinfeng, who was donned in his military uniform, as he then headed straight toward the man. Following that, he took out the green book and directly spoke, I'm Tang Xiao. We need to immediately rush to Mist Source Island. This is the document. Hu Xinfeng took the green book and looked at it a few times, saying, 
I've received orders from my superior to use this military helicopter to send us to Nanshia province. We'll then have to board a ship to Mist Source Island. We'll be arriving there before evening if the trip goes smoothly. We can't fly straight there? Tang Xiao frowned. No flights can travel to and from Mist Source Island according to the military aircraft agreement, Hu Xinfeng shook his head. The Air Defense Division has an intercontinental armed system in Mist Source Island. Once a plane is closing about 50 kilometers with 400 meters of altitude, it will be identified as an enemy and shot down. The military helicopters are not an exception either. Isn't there also a fighter plane there? Asked Tang Xiao. No. Thing is, there's something unsuited there, Hu Xinfeng shook his head. What is this something, exactly? Asked Tang Xiao. It's a strange magnetic field that shrouds an area of dozens of kilometers in the vicinity of Mist Source Island. Any unit with a measuring device will malfunction if it enters the area. Furthermore, there's a thick, heavy fog around Mist Source Island. We found that the island only had its fog dissipated for two hours every day ever since we discovered the island. Hence, we can only enter and exit Mist Source Island during these two hours. Is it a formation array? Tang Xiao thought for a few seconds. Then, he nodded and said, forget it and let's go now. Anyways, can this chopper take these many people? With the two pilots in the cockpit, only ten people can board the cabin. I did not know how many men you'd be taking with you, so I only asked the military region to prepare this helicopter. I can apply to add one more now, though, said Hu Xinfeng. Then I'll have to trouble you, Tang Xiao nodded. Two minutes later, two military SUVs roared and stopped nearby as seven soldiers clad in camo uniform jumped off the car. They put down the camo bag they brought, saluted Hu Xinfeng and said, Phantom Combat Squad's Captain Yu Shuqing reporting to senior officer, sir. After returning the ceremony, Hu Xinfeng smiled and said, after receiving the order from the top brasses, I knew I'd see you again, old comrades. Your Phantom Special Combat Squad has made admirable distinguished services to the country over the years, and even the senior officer hasn't run out of praises for you all. It's our duty to serve for the country, sir, said Yu Shuqing with a smile. Hu Xinfeng nodded and his eyes swept the other six members of Phantom Special Combat Squad. He then nodded with satisfaction and said with a smile, I'm completely relieved to have your special operations team come with me to Mist Source Island. Xu Qing, let me introduce you to Tang Xiao, who is in charge of the incidents on Mist Source Island. All members of Phantom Special Combat Squad are now to take command from him. Yu Xu Qing frowned, but still saluted to Tang Xiao, Phantom Special Combat Squad's Captain Yu Xu Qing reporting to the leader, sir. There was a bit of anger in the eyes of the other six members of the special operation teams behind him. They could tell that Mo Au and the rest were very extraordinary when they arrived. More so that they could smell a faint bloody scent from their bodies that gave off quite a sense of threat even to them. But Tang Xiao was too young. The squad had always acted alone, and now that they were suddenly assigned to be under the command of an unknown young man, this greatly dissatisfied them. Tang Xiao indifferently nodded and said, I don't need any other helpers actually. But since you already accepted orders, it'd be rude if I were to decline and sent you back. When we get on Mist Source Island, I'll talk to the military supervisor there to make you stay in the base. A cold glint suffused in Yu Shuqing's eyes as he said coldly, you're crazy. Tang Xiao shook his head and straightly ignored him. He went toward Hu Xinfeng and led him Oao, Jin Shi, and the rest to board the military helicopter, leaving only two experts of the Everlasting Feast Hall behind. Boss, I have once dealt with someone from this Phantom Special Combat Squad, Shui Sha spoke to Tang Xiao in a low voice after they sat down in the cabin. Tang Xiao's brows were raised as he asked, When was that? When I found Mouse, said Shui Sha. A member of this Phantom Special Combat Squad tracked us down and was intercepted by me. He did not see my appearance, though, so they didn't recognize me. 
Tang Xiao understood in a flash as he smiled and said, It seems like they are the ones who fought with those people from the SOE company in Shanghai. If not for our special identity, this phantom special force is probably regarded as very powerful to ordinary people. If I were to face them I could decimate this entire squad, Shui Sha sneered. Don't give me that bullshit, will you? Tang Xiao snappily derided him. They are just ordinary people. What identity do you have? Do you feel great comparing yourself with them? Ugh. Shui Sha let out a hollow laugh and bowed his head, no longer speaking. Under the military helicopter, Emo Xiaonan, a member of Phantom Special Combat Squad squinted at the two men, Shui Gui, Yi Shi San, and immediately asked, Senior officer, what exactly do they do? Don't ask what you shouldn't ask. I am not clear about it myself. Hu Xinfeng shook his head. You don't know them either? Asked Emo Xiaonan. Doesn't that mean we'll be taking orders from that surname Tangbrat? Is this a joke or something? This is an order, rebuked Hu Xinfeng in a deep voice. Yi Shersan shot a cold stare at Emo Xiaonan and chillingly spoke. If you dare say anything more about our boss with that insulting face of yours, I will kill you here and now even if you're a soldier. Boss? Emo Xiaonan sneered, I was thinking he's some kind of top brass, big shot or something, it turns out that he's just a boss, huh? What the heck has happened to our superiors' heads? To think that they ordered us to obey orders from a businessman? Besides, just his braggart bodyguards are already a damn funny comedy. There was also an unsightly expression on Yu Shuqing's face. But he thought that there should be a lot more than that what they could see because he felt that it was impossible for a pure businessman to be qualified to come here and also obtain the rights command them. He glared at Emo Xiaonan and scolded him in a deep voice, shut up. Emo Xiaonan hummed coldly and glared provocatively at Yi San and Shuegua, no longer speaking. Twenty minutes later, another military helicopter was ready. Soon after Hu Xinfeng and the rest boarded it, it quickly disappeared into the clouds. After more than two hours, two military helicopters had already arrived at the Nanxia province garrison base, while the base itself had sent six military jeeps to send them to the military port. Liberty Passenger Liner After boarding this medium-sized liner, Hu Xinfeng spoke to the people on the liner and then sailed directly to Mist Source Island. They must bypass Taiwan in order to go to Mist Source Island from Nanxia Province, so the voyage took a lot of time. Only after it was dusk did the liner finally enter a misty sea zone. Interesting. While standing on the bow deck, Tang Xiao folded his arms and looked around. He could clearly sense that there was special energy drifting from the side, and it should be the energy coming from the fog. The volatility of this energy, however, had an active and stable regular pattern which was not formed by a natural formation but artificially created by an array technique. Tang Xiao, pay attention to your safety later. This sea area is not peaceful. Hu Xinfeng walked out of the cabin with a faint smile on his face, as he spoke to Tang Xiao after standing side by side. Tang Xiao turned his head and asked, Care to elaborate? There are savage beasts in this sea area. Do you know what a savage beast is? It's the kind of wild beast that possess a simple, intelligent mind, but its attack power is many times stronger than wild animals, especially in this foggy area which has black sharks living in. Fortunately, our ship is made of steel. If a wooden boat were to pass through this area, those black sharks would definitely break the boat's deck in one bite. Why has no one ever tried to hunt these black sharks? It's not like we have never hunted them. These black sharks are huge in numbers and also social animals. Every time they appear in groups, there will be at least hundreds of them. The army garrisoned here has been dispatching soldiers to clean them up many times already, but they always feel that they cannot kill nor destroy them. Tang Xiao nodded and said lightly, I'll send some people to help clean them up when the crisis on Mist Source Island is solved. I'm afraid we will no longer able to block the news about this island again after this incident, nonetheless. 
civilians from the outside will inevitably come here, so it's necessary to remove this crisis. Hu Xinfeng's mouth twitched, and there was contempt in his eyes when he looked at Tang Xiao. He had seen many capable people and many braggarts, but none of them was so arrogant. Even the army was unable to eradicate these black sharks, and yet, Tang Xiao, who had never seen them, actually dared to brag such a ridiculous bull here. He really couldn't think through why the higher-ups would send such a fellow to solve the crisis on Mist Source Island. As the liner sailed forward, it quickly passed through the foggy area and entered a clear field of vision, as a looming distant island was then seen in their range of sight. When the liner anchored on the island, Hu Xinfen personally took a batch of masks. I don't need it, Tang Xiao lightly shook his head. Don't talk nonsense, Tang Xiao. Hu Xinfeng angrily said. The virus epidemic spreading on Mist Source Island is very serious. If it wasn't for this gas mask provided on board this ship, I would have taken them to my comrades to wear. Just hurry up and put this on. We're going to get off the ship. Tang Xiao did not take it, walking to the edge of the deck before his figure then sprinted forward in an instant. After dashing for six plus meters, he leaped over in one jump and directly landed on the shore road, while Mo Ao and the others followed suit and also jumped ashore. Chapter 750 Grave Situation On the deck of the liner, Hu Xinfeng and the others' eyes turned saucer when they saw that Tang Xiao and his men easily jumped six plus meters away. The world's long jump record was 8.95 meters, but it was achieved through the inertia of a full sprint run up. Although the deck was only 6 plus meters away from the shore, they looked very relaxed to jump over without a run up. What they did was simply beyond Hu Xinfeng's imagination. What monsters! They just lifted their legs and yet jumped so far. Wouldn't they be able to break the world record if they were to participate in the Olympic Games? The contempt inside Hu Xinfeng's heart toward Tang Xiao reduced a lot. The members of the Phantom Special Combat Squad, including Captain Yu Shuqing, were also surprised by the long jump ability of Tang Xiao and his men. Although they could jump ashore like them, doing it so easily was not something they could achieve. These guys are experts, Captain, said Chen Yangfan, who had always been proud of his speed, leaned towards Yu Shuqing and said with a solemn expression. I already noticed that they all are masters, but I never thought that they were this powerful, Yu Shuqing nodded. Of all the members of our phantom squad, I'm afraid only you who could barely match them. That is if I take a few steps back to run, else it will be a bit difficult, said Chen Yangfan with a forced, wry smile. I don't think I could go anywhere close to the people who can become the envoys sent by our superiors to solve the crisis here either. All right, keep your vigilance, but don't displease them. Roger that. The squad nodded. On the shore, there was a medium-sized bus that could accommodate 20-plus people, with a young man donned in a leather suit and wearing a mask standing at the door. After he saw Hu Xinfeng, his eyes immediately shimmered as he greeted him with a salute, You're finally back, Chief of Staff. Our garrison is in huge trouble. How is the situation now, and how many men in the army got infected by the virus? Asked Hu Xinfeng. Only 88 people not infected by the virus, and they are those who got assigned to the two patrol ships in nearby waters. As for the rest, all of them suffered a cold, fever, and weakened body symptoms. We have taken various antivirus drugs, but it doesn't have any effect whatsoever, while the preventive medication we bought from that foreign black market will come too late. Do the other officers and our men still retain their combat capabilities other than those on the two ships? asked Hu Xinfeng quickly. We can pull it through for some time, but only three to five days at best, the young man nodded. Chief, the first carrier died just six hours ago, and there are now dozens of people who are seriously ill on the island. They could die at any time. With a slightly changed expression, Hu Xinfeng asked in a deep voice, how many people not infected are left on the island now? Anger flashed on the young man's face as he said more than 1,000 people, but more than 90% of them are from those foreign forces. They took that preventive agent before coming here, hence avoiding getting infected. 
Division Commander Yang forbid us to take action against them, so they are practically running wild on the island. Although they have yet to do anything too outrageous, they, kind of scattered here, prospecting the mineral resources and inquiring about various information. A cold glint flashed in Hu Xunfeng's eyes as he asked again, Did you bring that antivirus gas mask? Yeah, I brought them over. Thirty of them in total, the young man nodded. Hu Xunfeng turned to look at Tang Xiao, Yu Shuqing and the others, and then said in a heavy voice, We have not yet taken any preventive drugs before coming here, so we must wear gas masks on the island to prevent us from getting infected. Chief, we only bought 100 preventive drugs from those foreign forces, so we don't have to worry about being infected after taking them. We'll be fine with only wearing the masks. With that said, he poured a lot of black pills from the vial he carried along and gave them to Hu Xunfeng. Hu Xunfeng's eyes lit up and immediately grabbed one and stuffed it into his mouth. He then handed the rest to Yu Shuqing and his men while watching as they took them. When he gave it to Tang Xiao, however, he was rejected. We don't need it. Tang Xiao was reluctant and even unwilling to take this drug of unknown origin because he firmly believed that the virus would not be a threat for them, cultivators. Tang Xiao, you may be the commander of this operation, but you cannot be arrogant. Hu Xunfeng angrily said, this preventive drug is effective, you must take it as precaution and safety sake. You're not my superior and I don't have to obey your orders, said Tang Xiao indifferently. All right, it's urgent so we gotta hurry up. Anger gushed inside Hu Xunfeng's heart, but he forcefully suppressed it. He could not figure out the origins of Tang Xiao and his men, and he even thought that they were simply not from the security agency. On the road, Tang Xiao learned from the young man driving the bus about the situation of divine doctor Gui Jianchou, who had also taken the preventive drug and was now studying the virus on the island, and had not yet been able to find any anything from his study since yesterday. After driving for more than two hours, the bus entered a rugged mountain road, and the bumpy travel lasted for an hour before they finally entered an olive green military camp. Yang Chuxiong was the commander of the garrison. Despite being a division commander, his rank was major general. This man was still young, 46 years old, looking sturdy and robust, and had the bearings of a brave, tiger general. Welcome, Tang Xiao. The first moment he saw Tang Xiao, Yang Chuxiong was slightly stunned. Though he received the orders from the superior leader that the name of the person who would aid them in the crisis was Tang Xiao, never did he expect that Tang Xiao was as young as the rumors said. Hu Xunfeng might be unaware how great the achievements Tang Xiao performed before, but Yang Chuxiong had investigated Tang Xiao by using his privileges, and he could tell that Tang Xiao was not that simple on the surface. Tang Xiao gave a slight nod in response and said, Division Commander Yang, right? I already learned the current situation on Mist Source Island. It's grave, right? It's far more than grave. It's simply an indescribable mess, said Yang Chuxing with a bitter expression. I'm afraid more than half of the hundreds of thousands of people on the island will die if you can't solve the virus within two or three days. There are only two or three days of time. Where is Divine Dr. Gui Jianchou? asked Tang Xiao bluntly. Take me to him. He's in the temporary lab inside, answered Yang Chuxiong immediately. We have collected blood samples from the infected people and the divine doctor, is currently doing everything he can to study the nature of this virus and trying to find a solution. Ten minutes later, Tang Xiao saw the legendary divine doctor Gui Jianchou, who was now wearing a white coat and a pair of white gloves inside a temporary lab. He was now observing a small piece of carrion with a pair of tweezers. Hello, doctor. I'm Tang Xiao. Tang Xiao walked forward and introduced himself. Gui Jianchou was very thin, and his wrinkled face was full of solemnity. His brows slightly pressed after hearing Tang Xiao's words, as he carefully scrutinized Tang Xiao and slowly nodded, the young divine doctor of the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital, Tang Xiao. You have made those two conceited disciples of mine feel ashamed of their inferior abilities. 
Anyways, I have paid particular attention to some cases of your treatment, especially the acupuncture technique you used. It's simply a technique that turns bad into good, amazingly powerful. You're overpraising me, Tang Xiao politely replied. Senior Goe Jiancho, since you came here ahead of me, could you tell me the results of your study and the situation with the virus? I have encountered all sorts of diseases since I've begun studying medicine, but this virus is very strange. It has a wide range of transmission, be it through saliva, blood, air, water. Any healthy person has the possibility of being infected as long as they are within 10 meters from the infected. Of course, I have also studied Western medicine as well and have quite some achievements on it. Yet still, I find it very difficult to extract anything from this virus sample no matter what means I try. Furthermore, I've also tried over 100 methods, using massive medicinal herbs to carry out mixed research, yet am still unable to create an agent that can kill this virus. Its tenacity is way too strong. After a short silence, Tang Xiao took out a porcelain bottle and handed it to Gui Jianchou, saying, This is a medicine I refined myself. It has a good effect on tempering the human body. Try to put this into it, and let's see if it has any effect. Gui Jianchou looked surprised, but still took the porcelain bottle and carefully poured a drop on the carrion. ZZZT It was as though a strong sulfuric acid was poured on the carrion as it rotted at a very fast rate and turned into black water, with a pungent stench. Gui Jianchou's brows knitted. He forced a smile and said, not only does it have no effect, but it also will make the infected die a violent death once used on them. Tang Xiao squinted his eyes. Then, he grabbed paper and a pen on the table and quickly wrote down a list of medicinal herbs names, honeysuckle, wild lily, venom string seed, black scorpion, and golden cicada. Ah, come in, shouted Tang Xiao. Mo Ah pushed the door, came in and asked, any instructions, boss? Tang Xiao handed him the list and seriously said, find these herbs immediately and send them to me as fast as possible. Ask aid from Division Commander Yang as he is more familiar with this place than you. Understood. Mo Ah took the list and left. Gui Jianchou took back his vision from Mo Ah's back and asked with a confused expression, Tang, well, I'll just call you little Tang. Anyways, what exactly is this prescription of yours? That liquid is a body-tempering medicine, while the prescription I just made has the opposite medicinal property than the former. I just want to try to make the opposite medicinal property and see whether it's effective on this virus. Gui Jianchou looked to be absorbed in his thoughts before he nodded and said, the possibility is indeed quite high. I also refined medicinal herbs and prepared some medicines. After pouring it on the carrion, the aggravate decaying and corrosion did not happen. All things will develop in the opposite direction when they turn to the extreme, hence poison can be used to fight poison. Maybe the prescription you just made will have an effect. I'm also trying anything in a crisis like this, so I don't want to miss any possibility, Tang Xiao forced a smile. And to be honest, my medical skills might be special, but one thing for sure is, I admit that I won't be able to match you at all. You yourself have yet to thoroughly study the nature of this virus, while I have yet to even study the medicine to treat the infected. Hence, what I just refined is perhaps no better either.